specifically as we do in Sunday school and Bible class and here in the fellowship of worship, we must open the word of God. Amen. Let us pray as we approach unto it. Heavenly Father, we now come that you might open our ears and uh, pour into our hearts your sacred will. We ask, Lord, that the cleansing that took place as a result of communion will continue to abide uh, with our spirits yes. as you pour out uh, your word to us uh, accordingly. Let the word come forth as you have uh, inspired it. Sanctify me now, the messenger, the preacher, the servant, uh, that I might do according to your good pleasure. And I thank you for the great privilege of preaching. You've been good to me and merciful in my weaknesses. Help me in my weaknesses, uh, even this day. And bless your people accordingly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for all of you, it is truly a blessing to, to be in the house of God with the family of God that you, you love. I'm always reminded when I get away uh, of the blessings that we have here at home. I thank God for the goodness in our church and the fellowship and the love and the care that God has <coughs> provided for us these many years. Since our church was founded in 1939, God has allowed us to only have three pastors in which I'm the third of the three. And that's a rare thing nowadays. I meet ministers everywhere and it's very few that have been at a church for the du duration of their ministry and I count it a, a blessing. God has given me 30 years thus far here. Yeah. And that's the grace of God. He, he has kept your pastor and he has kept his flock. And uh, I thank God for each and every one of you because it is the Lord's mercy that has uh, brought us together and it is the Lord's grace that is keeping us together. Amen. We didn't go to our good friend, Dr. John MacArthur's church, Grace to You. We thought we would be led, and we were led by the Spirit to uh, seek out wor worship and fellowship with another congregation that was closer to uh, the place where we were staying. And God led, led us, Sister Ford and I, that morning to uh, St. Mark's uh, Presbyterian Church in Newport Beach. Didn't know anybody, but you know, it's easy for Pastor Ford to make friends. And truly, um, again, I was reminded of our church when we went to this particular church. It was in a beautiful setting uh, there in Newport Beach, which is an affluent community. I, when I pulled up, we had gone investigated on a Saturday prior to the Sunday. And uh, I looked at this beautiful structure, and I, and I don't know what the Lord just, in his own way, we were driving uh, up and down the boulevards of the area as we were praying, and my eyes caught attention to this church. Brought, uh, God brought our attention to this particular church, and we drove up, and it looked like we were going into a, 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 a park. It was beautiful trees and, and uh, road that lead, led up to the back. When you got there, just, just a beautiful place, sanctuary set off in a wooded type area. It really wasn't wooded, but it was just you know, tropical looking area. And uh, I said to myself that um, it's amazing how God can provide for people to have 
different types of churches and facilities and buildings. And uh, yet God reminded me, he said that wherever you go, whatever church you see, I have only one church. And I thought about the scripture said there, uh, divers, there, there, there are different administrations, different operations, but the same Lord wherever Christ truly is there. I said, Lord, I hope you were here because there's been a couple times, well, there's been at least one time we went to the church and they wasn't so friendly. They were, they, 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 it was a, it was a real orthodox church, but I think sometimes your orthodoxy and your principles can kind of get you to be a little spiritually stuffy. Mm -hmm. All right. So it was a, you know, we were saying, we hope that this church is not stuffy. Okay. And uh, it's like the Spirit saying, I hope your church is not stuffy. Mm -hmm. Why are you thinking about other folks? Now <laughs> right. you get an, uh, the idea of when visitors or people going to a church how they think. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> so you know what you're looking for. Come on so when you get home, make sure that what you're looking for is at home. Because right. other folks will be looking for similar uh, types of uh, spirit. Right. And so um, Sister Ford said, I don't, I just wonder what these people are going to be like. <laughs> and so um, one of the good indications we first got there, it was a, it was a kind of skinny, tall, uh, young Caucasian guy, long, flowing hair. It looked like he had been in a rock band. <laughs> but you know, God says, man, look at the outer appearance, the scripture. That's it. But God, look at the heart. That's right. And I looked, I said, well, <clears throat> he, on the outside, may not look like he's all sophisticated, but let me talk to him and ask him about this beautiful place. And uh, started talking to this young fellow and it, immediately he had a godly spirit. And he said, let me show you around. And he said, where are you all from? Make a long story short, he, he gave us a tour. He let us see what the sanctuary looked like and we were walking. Then he took me over to an office. And uh, it was another lady, and she was really nice. She said, oh, hi, where are you from? Where do you come from? And I thought, man, it's a wonderful thing to meet godly people in a church. You expect. I told her, I said, I got a good feeling. I think we're going to come back here tomorrow. And we don't know anybody. We've never been here. We just stumbled up on it. Sunday morning, we come to uh, the congregation, and we look around. We're the only black face in the whole place. I said to myself, uh-oh, Sister Ford. <laughs> I don't see nobody in here that look like us. But that didn't bother us because, you know, man, God said, man, look at that outward appearance. God looking at the heart. And my brother here that's worshiping with us, he probably saying the same thing this morning. <laughs> <laughs> he, he come in here, he said, wait a minute, ain't nobody here that looks just like me. But that's not the point. That doesn't really matter. That's right, that's right. That's right. That's not what we see on the outside that matters. That's right. That's right. It's what's gonna be manifested on the inside. That's right. And I want you all to know, by the time we got there to sit down in that church, and the preacher came up and the people came in before we could get in the door good. The people were greeting us, embracing us, talking to us like they knew us. And at one point, we almost couldn't get into worship for one guy. He was talking like, you know how Pastor Ford talked? <laughs> but they were so friendly and so nice that we just, we felt it. And it reminded me of home. And I want you all to know this. Come on. On a Sunday morning when we're worshiping, come on. And people come into our midst that don't know us. Make sure that you are friendly. That's it. That's because it. I was looking. I want you all to know I was looking at. I wasn't just looking at the people who were greeting. 
I was looking at every face that looked at me Come on, that determined that they want me to be there. That's right. And that's God right. says that's how it is at home too when people come. It's not supposed to be. You got the greeters, you got the ministers, you got all of the people in the church. Every one of us can have an effect on others and do have an effect. And I was just so overwhelmed. They were coming up, they were giving us stuff, they were sharing where you're from, they were talking. And a lot of people come to, to our knowledge were saying, oh yeah, we're from St. Louis too. We used to live in Florissant. I used to live in Blackjack. I'm like, everybody, everybody here is from where we from. And they said, we moved here for the good weather and this and that. And this is, this is our church. And they went to telling us how they got the church and beautiful church. Church has to be millions of dollars, especially in the area. The real estate there is just crazy. And I would say this church at least eight, nine million dollars. And it's like, it's just a handful of people like us. Wow. And they began to tell us how some wealthy benefactor Provided the land, mm. provided the building. And I'm looking at this beautiful edifice, and they're saying, the Lord bless. And the Lord said, I bless them. Just like I blessed you. Same God. Same God. They're my people. Same God. You are my people. Same God. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And I just say that so that in this atmosphere of people with all this hatred and violence, and I don't care where it's coming from, because it's coming from all angles. I just want you all to know that God wants us truly in these times to let our light shine. That's right, that's right. <laughs> People need to see Christ in us. So with the time that's remaining, I know it's late. Uh, first Sundays are long Sundays. This message is entitled, Our Enemy, the Devil. All right, go ahead, take your time. Our Enemy, the devil. Yeah. You know the scripture, Ephesians 6, verse 11. Paul said, put on the whole arm of God. It is, I want you all to know that God wants us to be equipped so that we can overcome the schemes of the devil. All right, come on now. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his purpose. God said, I've come that they might have life. Christ said, and have it more abundantly. Put on that whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes and strategies, strategies of the devil. The, the, the devil is want to mess up everything. He divides men. He wants to conquer. He tires up families. He breaks up marriages. He breaks up relationships. He, he brings souls discord among people who, who love each other. The devil is the enemy of God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our problems are not with people. Our problems are not with races. That's right. That's this is what right. we need to get out to the community. Yes, sir. To our politicians. We don't have a racial problem. We got people problems. We, we, we are people who have problems who don't realize that the problem is not with human beings. The problem is with the individual that work behind the scenes motivating the spirits, the attitudes, and the actions of human beings, which is the devil. The reason why there's so much evil and violence and killing is because the devil is in folk. That's right. The solution, people are like, well, what's the solution to bring harmony and unity amongst the races? And, and, and what is it that brings peace into the world? It is the love of God. That's right. That's and right. what has happened is people have gotten away from the fear of God. That's right. They've gotten away from the worship of God. Yes. They have gotten away from the word of God, uh -huh. and therefore the devil is running rampant. Yes, all of these children dying yes. in the urban communities uh -huh. and all of the shootings and, yeah. and the carjackings. I think yeah. Brother David just went to the funeral of the guy who was killed for his truck. Mm -hmm. The guy was just trying to keep his truck and he was killed. A decent fella just pulled out for nothing. You would think, what would make somebody kill somebody for a truck that they can't keep, can't register, won't be there, and kill somebody just for a joy ride? I'll tell you what would make them do it. The devil. That's right, that's right. Our enemy, the devil, when he is in the heart, we don't care about nobody. Come on, preacher. And it doesn't matter if you're black or you're white. 
or you brown, or you Asian, whatever. If the devil is in your heart, come on, preacher. You're subject to do all kinds of evil. So what we need to do is work on dealing with the devil. If we can get Christ in the souls of men, then men will change their behavior. So Paul, he says, we are wrestling not. Don't think the problem, you know, a lot of people say, well, just, you know, I wouldn't have no problem with my job if it wasn't for my boss. No, if it wasn't for the spirit of the devil in your boss. And so if you haven't witnessed to him, that's part of the problem. Because if you witness to him and he gets saved and he gets Christ in him, he'll know how to treat his employees. But a lot of times because we have not d done and we are not doing what God has called us to do, then in the world is just drifting into the hands of Satan. And he is running rampant. And people no longer respect the preacher, don't respect the church. Bible class is not important because they're not going to practice the word of God anyway. Why learn? Why read? Why study? Why go to church if I know I'm not going to do what I know coming out of the church? That's why a lot of folks don't come to church because they ain't interested in following what God has commanded out of his word. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You got a problem with somebody? It's not that person. It's what's going on inside that person. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. See, our enemy, you can't see him. That's right. It's bad when you can't see the enemy. <laughs> so how do you protect yourself against an enemy that you can't see? Because see, he's spiritual. See, the devil is tricky. He's wise. He's crafty. But you can't see him. He's a spirit. He's an angel. A fallen angel. Notice, against principalities, that, that is authority set up by Satan, fallen demons that were once angels created for the glory of God. Break it down, Pastor. They have joined league with the devil. The Bible says in Jude, the angels that kept not their first estate. Yes, sir. From the beginning, God created beautiful, wonderful angels, and Satan or Lucifer, the light bearer, was the crowning creation of the angelic world. Well, nobody liked Satan before he became Satan. His name in the beginning was Lucifer. I just want to tell you about the enemy today. I know I'm going to run out of time, but I want, I want you to know who the devil is. Because you, you don't know how to deal with an enemy if you don't know who that enemy is. That's it. See, we think our problem is with people. I don't know. It's behind the scenes. I, my problem is with the devil who is influencing, manipulating, and controlling people. And let me tell you this. If you're not a Christian, you're a child of the devil. He got you. You The devil ain't got me. It's, if Christ don't have you, Satan got you. You can be moral, you can be nice, you can be kind, but you do not belong to God unless you have committed your heart to God. You are not a Christian. You are not a child of God. You are not saved unless you have made that commitment willfully with your own heart, your own mouth, your own tongue, and more, open, more uh, succinctly, your own heart. If you have not given your heart in love to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Satan is your daddy. And you can try to be good, you can work on being good, and without the power of another invisible force, the, the most powerful, almighty force, which is the Spirit of God living in you, you can't do no good. You cannot be declared good. The righteousness that we have to go to heaven is an imputed righteousness. It is God has given it to us because we have accepted him as our Lord. Without acceptance, without belief, without repentance, we are the children of the devil. People don't believe it. And Christians have a hard enough time. We have the spirit of God living in us, living right. We know that people who do not confess or believe or accept Christ, they, they have, there's no hope. So when people doing our, people say, I don't know how they could kill all the people. Yes, I do. I know. Yeah. Because the enemy 
possesses them. That's right. Yeah. The devil manipulates us. And so let's let's let's, let's we're gonna take it these next few Sundays. I won't preach next Sunday, but third Sunday. It's gonna be a series of messages of dealing with our enemy, the devil. We're gonna get to know him. So I know time will not allow today, but I want you to get this foundation. It's against powers, it's against root, it's against the, the darkness, not light. Satan is the opposite of truth. He is the opposite of light. He is in darkness, and everything he does is in darkness. The darkness of the, uh, the rulers of the darkness of this world. And God has given him limited authority, controlled authority. Remember Job? Have you considered my servant Job? But he had to have permission to mess with Job, right? So it's not like the devil just has power equal to God. No, God is allowing him to do his work for a season. To test men, to try men, to, to deal with men. If, if men do not turn to God, he lets the devil have his way, whatever way he wants, so that they will ultimately realize that without him, their lives are hopeless. And some people don't realize that. That there's nothing going to work until we get right with Jesus. There is nothing going to be in line because we have lined ourselves up with the devil and we cannot succeed. Oh, we may have some, some physical, natural, material prosperity. Right. Satan can control That's material good. things. That's gonna go I mean, dope dealers can get rich and live high off the hog for a while. Murderers and gangsters live good because Satan paying some of his folks. But when you, when, you, when you work for the devil, he, he will reward you temporarily. That's right. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we're not talking about the White House. We, we're not talking about the Congress or, or the or senators, them high places, but there are places high as the sphere of the atmosphere. Satan is all up in the atmosphere. This is why the devil work of murdering and killing, shootings and all, he working everywhere. And he works in different communities however he feels he can manipulate that community. He works in urban communities. You see these young African American men now just killing each other. That's the work of the devil. That's the work of the devil. You're killing your own uh, uh, family members, your own nieces, nephews, cousins, aunts, and uncles. It's the work of the devil. He works in the community where we got all of this meth traffic and all of this where they need now to carry uh, Narcan because all this drugs and activities in, in the schools and, and predominantly even in this area. A lot of drug abuse. Talk to any officer, drug. That's the devil. Yes. You go into the counties, you go into the different cities, you go anywhere. The devil is no respect of person. He don't care if you're black, he gonna try to get you. He don't care if you're white, he don't care if you're brown. He will manipulate any people anywhere. Go overseas. Where there's fightings and wars and debates and divisions, it's the devil. The world needs Jesus. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Look at what 1 Peter says. And then he goes on to say, put on the whole arm of God. Equip yourself. But you have to become a child of God. You got to enlist in the army before you get a uniform. See, a lot of folks won't try to practice what God, you can't be a soldier for God if you haven't enlisted in the army. He said, well, I'm going to practice this. I'm going to put this shield in faith. The devil beat you alive because he, the devil take your sword and whoop you with it. You can't fight the devil if God has not authorized you as a soldier. You're going to get whooped on every hand. A lot of people pretending to be Christians. Come on, preacher, preacher. And they ain't got no power. They, they have no, no authorization. No weapons. They have not enlisted no into the army because Peace by faith they have not given their hearts truly to God. But they playing warrior. Remember them sons of Sceva? Yes, sir. Who said they were going to cast, cast out demons? demons. Uh, we cast out demons in the name of Paul. Paul. Yeah. And uh, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, and the demons say, wait a minute. Preacher. The principality, the Paul. power, the spiritual Paul. wicked demons say, wait a minute. We know Paul. <laughs> and we know Jesus. No, but where y'all coming from? We, and yeah. beat them half to death. Stripped the clothes off and ran them off naked. That's what the devil, the devil will eat you alive. Don't play like you're a Christian. Don't think because you go to church you got power. And, and the devil really get mad when you play church. 
when you act like you're in, but you know you're not. You got one foot in the world, one foot in the kingdom of darkness, and one foot in the, in the kingdom you can't, you can't have your foot in both places. You can't serve two masters. Either you're going to love the one or hate the other, or you're going to cleave to the one. Yes. Yes. And reject the other. Who are you serving today for real? Yeah. Who is your Lord? Who is your master? Yeah. Are you for us or are you against us? Yeah. Are you for Christ mm -hmm. or are you against him? Mm -hmm. look, look, look at 1 Peter Come on with it. It's all right. uh, chapter 5, verse 8. I'm just telling you he's warning. This is just the foundation. 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober. Come on now. Those of you who used to get drunk know what it means to be sober. We know the difference between being drunk and being sober, right? Be sober, spiritually speaking. Be, be wise, be sensible. Be aware. Be aware of what? And be vigilant. Yeah, be watchful. Be watching. Why? Because your adversary. Your enemy. Now he's talking specifically here to Christians. Yes, sir. You can be sober all you want. You can lock your house all you want. You can get you a pistol. And you can put your alarm. But if God is not keeping the house, you can forget it. You can't keep our invisible people. You can't keep demons out of your house. You can't keep the devil out of your house with no lock. Come on, preacher. You telling the truth. You can't shoot the devil with no pistol. You might shoot somebody he using, and he'll send somebody else. Be right about it. You gotta. We gotta watch. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. Have you ever seen a roaring lion? Yes. Most hungry. Let hungry. me tell you something that um, I, I, and I believe it because I know he does his research. Dr. John McGarthy said, you know, one of the most important things about a roaring lion, about a lion, have you ever seen these wildlife life specials, yes. National Geographic? Roaches. Do you know that when, when a lion roars, he doesn't roar when he's chasing after the prey, he is scared off. That's right. That's right. A lion roars after he caught the antelope. After he has captured the wildebeest, that's when he rose. In other words, when he has captured, thank you, go help. When he captures his prey, it's a victory rope. And that's what's happening in a whole lot of folks' lives right now. Satan is roaring all over the place because he didn't capture everything in their life. The devil has taken prey. Go ahead, please. Because they haven't been vigilant. They weren't sober. They didn't have the Lord's protection. And so Satan can get them. But you know, I love when I see in these wildlife specials when that gazelle or that deer, that lion is chasing them. And he makes them, he making moves. And he skips and he jumps. And just when that lion thinks he had him, that gazelle ducks, moves, and hits the curb and get with the pack. That's what happens when the Holy Spirit is in you. When the devil come after you, you know how to hop, skip, jump, and move. And the enemy, he can't devour us. He can't get us. Because we are like that gazelle. We are like that wildebeest. And then you got some of those wildebeest, I don't know if you've seen them, when they get in groups and they get in herds, and then a pack come, and that one lion is going to come up on them and they all get together get and they put their heads down. Oh, yeah. Then that lion be like, wait a minute. And back off. That's what happens when a whole bunch of us Christians come together on one accord and stick together like we have been doing in this church for years. The devil can't come in and do what he can do in other places because when he stick his head in here, we put our heads down and let him know we ain't Come on now, easy price. The ones that be on the outer edge, the folks who come to church sometimes. Come on now, it's 
Satan the people assembly. who want to run by themselves, uh -huh. usually it's that weak one, that isolated one, that the devil can easily. Because now he get it from the pack. See, when they run it with the pack, cool. they don't know who to get. That's they right. go into so many right. different directions. That's right. But when you by yourself, it's easy. You easy prey. Easy prey. Be careful to walk away from the church, the saints, the people of God, the congregation of the righteous. Because now you're more vulnerable. That's right. This That's is why right. a lot of times when people leave the church, a lot of times they end up not going to no church. Yeah. And let me tell you, there is no perfect church. Because there are no perfect saints. Yeah. We are perfect in our actual position with God. Or where we, where we stand with God. But in practicality, in our living, we still got issues. So he is as a, I'm going to come to a close, time ain't going to lie. He is a roaring lion. He roars after he gets his victory. After he gets that meat in his mouth. That's right. Taste of that blood. Yep. Yep. And see, that's what he's doing. When he busts up our marriages, come on, come on. He be roaring. See, that's I don't it. want the devil roaring up in my life. Don't yeah. be roaring over my marriage. Yes, you can't have it. Don't roar. Don't roar over my kids. Yes, sir. Go ahead, preach. This is why I get the word out there. And if, you, if we take heed to that word, mm -hmm. God guides. You ain't got to worry about it. Don't worry about the mic. They, 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 they. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's all right. I appreciate that. I don't want the devil roaring yeah. over my finances. Yeah. Oh, now. Don't capture my business. Stay away from me. Yes, sir. God is with me. Yeah. That's it. God bless him. He's a roaring lion. Yes. Seeking. That lets me know he already got some folks. Yeah. Yeah. He done already ain't up some folks lying. He eating up churches. Come on, preacher. He eating up community. Come on. He eating up stuff all over the place. Yeah. I'm saying to you all, don't let him eat you up. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Foolish, yeah. Right. 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 Foolish, right. Hatred. Violence. That's Satan. Why is it that we be arguing with each other? Mm. Come on, preacher. Preach. Satan. Come on now. Why are we mad at folks who say we love? Brother, so a discord. Satan. Come on. on. The devil, he, he tricked you. He Come make on. you think it's your wife. Come on, preacher. <laughs> he make you think it's your husband. That's right, now. that's right. It ain't them, it's what's in them. Yeah. If they misbehave and acting like him, Satan on the floors. He be pushing for Say, you remember when we was kids? Come on now. And two people look like they get ready to fight. Yeah. It's, and then there be the people around that instigate. Instigate. The the they want to see the fight. They want to see it. And so what they do, they be talking and they push it yeah. into each other. That's right. So the fight gets started. Satan is an instigator. Yes, he is. He instigates fights. He made two people who were very friends. Come on, come on. End up being worse than enemies. You tell them the truth. Because he told you something about them. He told him something about you. Liar. Either one of y'all got beginning. facts or the truth. Father, liar. Like Jesus said, sitting down and asking your brother, hey, do you really hate me? Or are you really against me? Did you really mean that? What did I do? No, we get mad just because the devil is whispering in our ears. Well. Something that's not true. That's right. That's right. Need the truth. Father of lies. Preach it. <laughs> i give you an example. Come on with it. Your husband come home. Your wife come home. They got something to eat. They didn't bring you nothing to eat. <laughs> First thing the devil gonna say, they don't care about you. They just won't care about themselves. They wouldn't even think enough about you to bring you something to eat. See, he's a slander. Accuse the other brother. He's the accused. Come on, preacher. They don't care nothing about you. See, I've been tell telling you all along. Yeah, what he tell me? Because if they did, they would have been thoughtful enough to do it. Uh huh. At least call Then you go to get upset. You didn't ask them what's going on or whatever. And the next thing you know, if you had come, you go back and they say, Look, I got your food in the car. I just ain't trying to bring it in. <laughs> Sometimes we tell the good. We don't, we don't get the detail. We don't, and then we ain't got to get mad every time something don't seem right or don't feel right. It's the fact. The person gonna say, well, I thought you already ate. I thought you told me you was on the diet. 
That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. I want to try to tip you. You always run around talking about, I ain't going to eat no more. I don't want right. no food. Don't bring me the food. Bring some. Who said, why, why are you wasting that food? Well, I thought you looked like you were yesterday. <laughs> Sometimes we can't win from losing. You get the picture. Okay. Sometimes no matter what we do, people want to fight with us. Yeah. That's it. No matter what. No matter what you do. I'm trying yeah. not to be like that. Yeah. I told my wife, look, look, there's some bring the devil in here. I don't even want to hear the devil from the devil. I love you. That's that. I'm always loving you. I don't care what you do. Yeah. I don't care what you don't like, what you don't like, this and that. I don't care nothing about your clothes. I don't care nothing about your hair. I don't care nothing about your weight. I don't care about none of that. I care about you. Come on now. Yeah. That's right. So don't be upset. Don't be upset. And plus, you got to impress nobody but me. That's right. Come on now. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So what's the problem? Say it, Pastor. Say it. It's the only way around it. And I'm That's telling you, you're the most beautiful. That's right. You ain't nobody better. I don't care nothing about them. I love everything about you. I love your hair. I love your eyes. I love your shape. I love Come on, your man. I love your clothes. <laughs> I love everything about you. Yeah, man, I don't need to get it out of my shape. That's the devil. Come on, man. That's the devil. Come on, man. You, just, <laughs> you don't listen to me who love you, but you're going to listen to the one who wants you to be saved. That's right. Somebody I always tell her that he tells you you're not perfect. Mm. You don't look good. He the one that turned out his self-esteem. That's on. right, that's he right. He tells you your husband ain't handsome no more. Mm. He tells you his muscles ain't big enough. Mm. He showed you that guy on TV. Come on, preacher. <laughs> Come on, preacher, preach. He showed you that guy with curly black hair. Then he tell you, look at his hair. Oh, look at the black, he got no more hair. Oh, look at all that crap. This is what you stuck with for life. <laughs> This is what you said, I go too fast. Fuck out, stop. <laughs> you don't you think you move too fast? Come on now. You're not happy no more. Come on. You please. need freedom. Tell you ain't bondage. Tell the truth. You tell, you tell the truth. You ain't happy. You're making a claim. He always wants us not to be happy. That's it. That's it right he there. He always wants us sad about That's it. That's us. it. He That's always it. wants us mad about it. Pull off. It's the devil. He's pull a roaring lion. I'm coming to a close. Pull that wall off. This is the beginning. I'm just laying the foundation for this. Pull the wall off. The scripture says he's a roaring lion. Look what it says. Look at searching. Seeking. Whom he may devour. He tells us stuff that's gonna happen that ain't gonna happen. He makes us feel like we sick, even when we're not sick, and then we get sick. That's so true, that's so true. That's He'll so tell true. you you sick. It don't so be true. That's the truth. It's in your head. He's giving you your head. I ain't lying. Ah, you know you don't feel good today. I can feel good if I want to. That's right. Plus, why don't I feel good? You know, am I hurting? That's a whole different story. Sometimes I look like not felt good, but ain't nothing wrong with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The devil. That's right. That's we right. Be you sick? You right. No. You got pneumonia? No. You got cancer? No. Your tooth hurt? No. Well, what's wrong with you? I don't know. The devil. The devil. You just don't feel good. You don't feel the devil. Yes. He can get in your head. Yeah, he will. He take a smile out of your face. Yes, he will. He'll tell you. I, he'll make you sad. You know why you sad? Because you're tired of this old house you need. Look at all the pretty houses over there. Uh -oh. You're telling the truth. Look at the house over there. That's it, that's it. What you working for? Come on, all come on. All the hard you doing. Come on, come on, come on. All right. And then you go in there and go off on your spouse. <laughs> Put that pressure on. Come on. All these tomatoes. That's the devil. Threats. The Bible says do all things without murmuring <coughs> and complaining. And complaining. Do we do it? Right. I think about that. Be, be careful what you say, what you do, what you call out. You're calling out this stuff. You the criminal. You can make them just, I'm happy. I'm thankful. Yeah. You know, sometimes it takes a tragedy to shake us and say, wait a minute, I'm blessed. Yeah. Be grateful. Yeah. Be thankful. Man, Lord, you just take away this pain. Yeah. I ain't saying nothing about nothing else. Yeah. Because if you laying up there racking and aching in pain, you don't care where you live. Lord, just give me the house. I don't care what yeah. you yeah. Give me home. Well. If you just had surgery yeah. and you can't open and raise your arm this high, Lying, you don't miss that arm then. You take for granted your arm every day. You ain't lying. You take for granted your feet and your legs. Don't do it. Be thankful. You know, if we think about just how good God has been yes, all yes, this yes. time. Yes. What you worried about right now? Some of y'all worried about stuff right now. You ain't got to 
to worry about it. While you trying to figure out, I don't have to worry about it. Let go and let go. Enjoy the day. You don't know what you're going to do I think about my kids. I'm a child. I think about grandkids. I think about you all. When those folks were shot, I think it could have been us. Yeah. It might be us. We ain't better than nobody else. Yeah. It's not that we so good. It's that life and chance happened. God got a plan. All of us got to die. I don't know how I'm going to die. Yeah. You don't know how you're going to die. When are you going to die? You're going to die, though. Yeah. That's right. That's a fact. You're going to die. That's one point on that. So you're going to be married about something worse like that. I can't tell you where you're going to die. I can't tell you when, but you're going to die. And you're going to die something. I don't care how much medicine you take. I don't care how good your health queen. That's right. I don't care what's going on. You're going to die in this place. But guess what? Jesus let me know. You don't have to worry about death, son, because you're going to live again. You see, I ain't scared of death. They come in here and shoot the church. I ain't worried about it. It's going to get me home faster. I'm going to see Jesus. But the people who don't have that hope don't have that belief. I'm done. Listen, we'll right. finish this at another time. He's a roaring lion. He's just going to eat up your life. Quit letting the devil steal your job. Yeah. Thank you. And quit fighting with folk. Yes, sir. Quit yes, sir. being mad with folk. Come on now. Quit complaining because it's the devil. That's who it is. Next time I see the devil in you, I'm going to tell you. That's the devil. <laughs> Next time you see the devil, Next time call the devil. Say, that ain't you. That's the devil. <laughs> Before we can get out of here, somebody, the devil. Yeah. On the parking lot, step on somebody's shoe. Somebody don't roll somebody's eyes at somebody. Somebody ain't gonna shake somebody's hand right. Somebody gonna shake somebody's hand too hard. Somebody gonna skip somebody. And somebody gonna be mad. For what? Let me ask y'all this. Do y'all love everybody here? Is there anybody in here you hate? Okay, none of y'all are hated here. Everybody in love. Is there anybody here that you don't like? I ain't seen any ways. Is anybody here you don't want the best for? You don't want to see them healthy and happy and prosper and doing well. Is there anybody here? Man, we almost in paradise, dude. We deal with a little arthritis. We deal with a few pains here and there. But we blessed, right? Blessed. Just remember, we got one in us. We got one in us. One in us. One adversary. Even when we get on each other's devil. Y'all yeah. hear me? Yeah. Got money in there. And it's the devil. Yeah. He causes division. Yeah, he, he makes people turn on people. Yes, yes, yes. People who've been together for years, all of a sudden now, they don't love you no more. That's the devil. And I'm going to let y'all in on the secret. I got to tell y'all this. I was thinking the other day. Some things you got to think it through with the devil. This, I'll put this in my mind. When you really love somebody, it ain't got nothing to do with that outside stuff. I just want you to know, when you love somebody or love something, it ain't got nothing to do with how they look. It's because you have placed your love upon them. Mm -hmm. If you start thinking about truly loving a person and committing your love to a person, it'd be hard for you to hurt that person. That's right, that's right. I mean, if you really, no matter what they do, I'm gonna tell you all something, this is what I was saying to you. I can never, and I think this is, this is what God, he wants us to be. I can never, when, when your love gets to, the, get to this level, when you want your love at this level, when you love people so much that you you would be willing, you would rather hurt yourself than hurt them. That's that's deep right there. Yeah, it is. That is. That you would rather hurt yourself. That's deep. Than hurt them. And you know how I know it's biblical because Jesus said, "Greater love have no man." It is. He said, "Greater love than a man lay down, lay down his life." <clears throat> that you're willing, you would rather die and be willing to die for that person. Yes. And I thought about it, and I ain't brave, I ain't boasting, I'm just telling you the truth. I thought about this with my wife the other day. I said, I really do love her. 
It used to be a time I just liked it. <laughs> when we were young, I liked how she looked. I want y'all to hear this. Go ahead, go ahead. I want men and women to hear this. Keep it real. I liked how she looked. I liked how she talked. I liked how she walked. I liked how she fixed her hair. Like everything about her. I picked her because I liked her. Mm -hmm. But through time and experience, it walked. I learned by the grace of God and the Spirit of God to love her. Mm -hmm. I learned. See, a lot of people don't know It's a difference. And when I say that, it's because now when I look at her, mm -hmm. and she tells me, she says, in your eyes, it's always encouraging, in your eyes, ain't nothing else wrong with me. And I begin to understand what she's saying to me. And maybe I am blinded. But love will sometimes blind. That's all right. That's all right. To imperfections. Love will, 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 will look past faults. And That's it. Look past Call it. Call it. Jesus did. weaknesses. And yes. I'm talking about real love because I begin to say, oh, yeah. And now it's a whole different level because when I see her and she's Asian, I love what I see in Asia. Come on. And what she thinks is Asia issues. Come on. My heart says, Come on. That's where it turned from us being together as a team. Yes, sir. That's that's um, that's signs of oh, you oh, raising a beautiful child oh, and, and, and going through that pain yes, with me yes, sir. And, yes, sir. and being a faithful mother. Oh, and, and you being in the church, yo, man, yo, yo, yo. You look great hair you got and, and whatever. I don't care about how you look Come on now. outside. Yes. My yes. heart embraces who you are yes. on the inside. Yes. Yes. And you ain't never got to worry about that. Yes. And it makes me sad to even think that you would not be with me or that I would hurt you. This is why I understand how people are so easy to divorce now. Come on now, Pastor. Yes. Do you really love that person? Come on now. Do you really care about them? Not what you like, what you want, and how you want it, but what about that person who can't live with you? That's it. Good and bad. That man will work like a dog, didn't have much in heaven. You and your children, and now you're going to turn your back for Mr. Muscle Man. Are you going to turn your back for that sister who can't live with you? I've seen you. And watch them dirty clothes. I'm going to take care of the dumb. Come on, preacher, go ahead. That ain't nothing but the law. Preach. He ain't that new. He ain't that new. He ain't that new. He ain't that new. Go ahead, go ahead, preacher. That's right, preacher. That's lust. It's the difference. Let me tell you this. That's the kind of love that Christ has for us. That he looked beyond our shortcomings, our weaknesses, and whatever is going on. And he loved us so much that he died. And he still loves us. And there's nothing he won't ultimately do for us. And even though times may be tough, God loves you. See, I know God loves me if nobody else does. That's right. And his love is never going to change. That's it. Never, never going to change. Enough. Never going to change. There's no greater love. You better know God loves you if you're mm. a Christian. And you'll feel good about everything else if you know God loves you. The doors of the church are open. You give your life to Christ right now. You can resist the devil.